Hey there, good morning everybody. I know we said we weren't going to do this live today, but here we are. I, we got working yesterday and we worked all the way up until about 8 o'clock last night and uh, ran out of time to get it done, to record it. So I just said, well, we'll get up earlier and we'll get her done there. So I don't know that anybody will watch me because nobody's expecting it, but at least you can catch the replay later on, which may be what you were planning on doing anyhow since you knew it was going to be recorded. I don't know. Anyhow, here we are. Hope you have a wonderful Saturday today. We're going to cover two psalms to kick the day off, Psalm 69 and then Psalm 70. Psalm 69 is rather lengthy, 36 verses. Psalm 70 only has five, however, and so we're going to give you both of them this morning and tomorrow, pick it right up from there. Uh, so let me give you the background of Psalm 69. How about we pray first? Father, bless our reading and our study this morning. Uh, help us on this cold, snowy morning to focus in on your word. Give us the mind of Christ, please, as we read. We ask it in his name. Amen. Okay, Psalm 69. <clears throat> David, as you recall, had committed a pretty grievous sin against the house of Uriah. He stole his wife away from him. He committed adultery with her. She became pregnant with his child. And then in order to cover it up, he brings Uriah home so that he doesn't have to be responsible for this baby. Only Uriah is too, uh, has too much integrity. He will not stay the night with his wife when his men are at battle. And so he goes back out after his pass, his weekend pass, and David puts him in the front, gets him killed. So basically he murders Uriah. And so now David brings Bathsheba to the palace to be his wife, the child is born, only lives a week, this young son, and then that baby dies. God took the life of that child. And God told David this. He said, because of your sin, the sword will never depart from your house, meaning that his family is going to be inflicted with violent actions as long as it exists. And so, David saw some very terrible things happen within his family. The first thing he saw happen was the death of this baby boy. Another thing that he saw happen was one of his sons, Amnon, raped his half-sister, Tamar. So one of David's sons rapes his daughter. Then Absalom finds out about it. Absalom kills Amnon because David doesn't do anything for three years. And so Absalom now kills Amnon. Then later on, Absalom rises up in rebellion against uh, David, tries to steal his throne, steals his concubines, and then Absalom is killed in a battle by one of David's men. And then where this psalm picks up, Adonijah, another son of David. We haven't talked about him, I don't think, since we've been in the book of Psalms. Adonijah steps up, and Solomon is the one that has been given the throne by David at the last days of David's life. And so he transfers the leadership to Solomon, but Adonijah is trying to steal the throne from Solomon. And so he does some shady things behind the scenes, and he even gets a group of people to follow him in another city. And when Solomon finds out about it, Adonijah is put to death by Solomon. So now you've got the baby dies, Amnon rapes Tamar, Absalom kills Amnon because of what he did, Absalom tries to steal the kingdom away from David, Absalom is put to death by one of David's men, and now Solomon kills Adonijah for trying to steal the throne. So when God said the sword would not depart from his house, sounds like he was accurate, doesn't it? So what is Psalm 69's background? It's after Solomon had put Adonijah to death. And so verse number one, save me, O God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I think, I'm sorry, I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into deep waters 
where the floods overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dried. Mine eyes fail while I wait for my God. They that hate me without cause are more than the hairs of mine head, that they would destroy me. Being mine enemies wrongfully are mighty. <clears throat> then I restored that which I took not away. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel, because for thy sake I have borne reproach. Shame hath covered my face. I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up and the reproaches of them that reproached thee are fallen upon me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was to my reproach. <clears throat> I made sackcloth also my garment, and I became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me, and I was the song of the drunkards. This is some of the darkest speech we've heard from David, isn't it? David is in despair, great despair. And of course, all of these woes and sorrows have accumulated on him through the years. And so now he's just pouring his heart out to God. He says that his troubles are overcoming him. He doesn't know how he can bear them. He's wondering where the God is that's rescued him all those other times. And now he says, look at, I've borne a reproach for you and people have mocked me and strangers have made fun of me. I've become a sermon illustration. He says, I've become a proverb. The drunks are singing about me. And I just, I don't know how much longer I can bear this. Verse 13, but as for me, my prayer is unto thee, O Lord, in an acceptable time, O God, in the multitude of thy mercy, hear me in the truth of thy salvation. I love that phrase, in an acceptable time. What David's saying is, God, I defer to your time frame. If you don't want to deliver me yet, I'll be patient and wait. In an acceptable time, you'll come for me. Deliver me, verse 14, out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from them that hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the water flood overflow me. Neither let the deep swallow me up and let not the pit shut her mouth upon me. Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Turn unto me according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Hide not thy face from thy servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily. Draw nigh unto my soul and redeem it. Deliver me because of thine enemies. Thou hast known my reproach and my shame and my dishonor. Mine adversaries are all before thee. Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I looked for some to take pity, but there was none, and for comforters, but I found none. They gave me also gall for my meat, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. There's another one of those prophetic verses thrown in regarding Christ on Calvary. When he said he thirsted, they thrust that sponge with vinegar into it. Just from time to time, we see those things pop up. And of course, this section of the psalm here is a little bit, a little bit more hopeful. The beginning of it was terrible. <laughs> My whole world's crushing around me, and now David he and he seems to do this, doesn't he? He talks about how bad a situation is, how hopeless, and then all of a sudden he starts coming around and saying, "You know what? It's not going to be that bad. I think I'm going to be able to pull through this." So, verse number twenty-two. Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened, that they see not, and make their loins continually to shake. Pour out thine indignation upon them, and thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, 
and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. And iniquity, add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. And so now he's He's turned the corner full on. First, it's all these people hate me and they're trying to destroy me. But God, I know you will hear me and deliver me. Now, when it comes to these people that were trying to destroy me, here's what I'd like you to do unto them. <laughs> I sometimes kid when, when we get to Matthew 5 and Jesus says, love your enemies, pray for them. And I'll say, when you start praying for your enemies, your prayers sound kind of like this. God, kill my enemies. And we sometimes do that. And that's not what the Lord meant when he said to pray for our enemies. But that's where David is here. And I think this is part of, I know there's this secular psychology that has formulated seven steps of grief or, or whatever. And I, I do believe that we go through certain seasons as we learn to manage the challenges of life and the struggles that come our way. And uh, when it comes to people who are our adversaries, our first natural instinct is to fight back or want to see them destroyed. When I say natural instinct, I do mean carnal instinct. It's not a spiritual instinct to want your, your enemies destroyed. But yet here David is, is asking for that very thing. Verse 29, But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heaven and earth praise him, the seas and everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of, this, of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein. And he sums the psalm up with the hope that everything is going to be accomplished, the trouble will pass, the enemies will be destroyed, and God will once again reestablish peace and righteousness for him. So there it is, end of David's life, the psalm written regarding Adonijah's attempt to take the throne from Solomon. All right, number 70. We've dealt with this background before. The background is David has returned to the throne after Absalom has been killed. So it's a bittersweet time. He's grateful to be back on his throne and have his kingdom back. At the same time, he lost his son in battle because of it all. Verse number one, Psalm 70. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, Aha, aha. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. And let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer. O Lord, make no tarrying. And of course, that sounds like a man still going through battle. He's talking about full recovery after battle. His son is dead, but those who sided with Absalom, that doesn't mean they're done fighting yet. Uh, doesn't mean they're ready to lay down their weapons and for things to go back to normal. Also, to resume the authority, to resume the rule, to regain the respect and the loyalty of the people that has now been lost. There's a lot to recover here after this great battle. All right, that's all we got for you this morning. We're going to pick it up tomorrow morning. Uh, we record it, but we broadcast it at 8 a.m., I believe is what time. We, yeah, we, we do it at 8 a.m. And uh, let's see, yeah, that's right. <laughs> have to think about it. And then you can watch it 
on, on your own. We can't do it at 10 because we live stream the services there. But hey, thanks for watching this morning. Like, love, share the post, get the word out there, and we're going to keep pressing on. We're almost to the halfway point of the book of Psalms. There's 150 chapters, so 75 is midway, and we we just finished 70, so we're, we're working on it. And there is one more day left in the month. I don't know that we'll cross that halfway point in that single day, but uh, you'll just have to tune in tomorrow and find out, I guess. Hey, have a wonderful Saturday. Stay warm out there. It's cold.